Primary objective complete. All targets eliminated. Gas is inbound. Marking new safe zone. Enemy UAV is online. Bye-bye. Contract... Hello out there, YouTube going on everyone it is d done here i am the average gaming dad and today i would like to talk about black ops 6 give my thoughts on some pros and cons i will do my best to keep this objective as much as possible and not uh, just issuing my subjective opinion as if it applies to everyone so i will try to keep to the facts and that way this is more of a constructive criticism uh or just pointing out some flaws that i see as opposed to just like a giant bitch sesh, which I don't think anyone's really interested in, although there is quite a bit you can actually bitch about with this game, but uh, we'll try and keep it relatively positive and, uh, and upbeat. Um, and with that, let's, let's start off with the negatives here. So I made, made a little list. Uh, we'll go through these. So the first one, and I'm, I'm sure for a lot of people this is a big issue, is the, con the connectivity, the hit detection, the desync uh, combination of these three. For whatever reason, right now, I am really, really struggling to find lobbies under 60 ping, uh, which is weird. Uh, I live in Phoenix, Arizona, so, you know, the fifth most populous city in the entire country, and yet I'm getting put in servers where I don't know. Like, typically, previous to the Black Ops 6 integration, my solo lobbies were generally around 20 to 30 ping, sometimes 40, and then the rare instance of a, of a 60 or or above ping. In this game, I, I'm almost always only on 60 ping and above. I've even got as high as you know 75 or higher, which is absolutely absurd. I, I don't know the reason why it can't connect me to some place closer. Um, I will be very open and honest and say that I did actually try using a VPN. Uh, the service was not good. I did not get any they get easier lobbies or anything like that, and I didn't. But I was just trying to get a better connectivity, so I was connecting to servers in Mexico and LA, and there was some improvement, but it was spotty at best. And I didn't, I don't want to pay for a VPN that that doesn't give me a better experience, so I'm not using that anymore. But uh, overall, I think it's just you know, there's shoot first, die first. You lose a lot of confidence in your gunfights. When you're pushing people, it's kind of a 50-50, rather or not your bullets are going to hit. And it can lead to some really, really, really frustrating situations. Um, so for me, connection, desync, hit detection, all those issues, number one priority. They've got to work on net coding. They've, they said that they were going to try to make it so that uh, you would connect to better servers to hopefully keep people from VPNing as much as they were. And it seems like we've gone backwards. So whatever the issue, whatever they did, they need to revert it and try again because it's just not working. Uh, the second biggest issue, and I know this is a complaint with everyone right now, is the audio. Uh, it's better than the first day or two where, I mean, you literally had no footsteps whatsoever. Uh, people would be in the same room with you. You would have no idea. That was incredibly frustrating. It's marginally better, but it's still not even close to where we were and where it needs to be. Um, there's still plenty of instances where you don't hear people that are in the same room or just sprinting, full sprinting behind you. If you are moving or shooting, 
it's really, really hard to hear things and pinpoint things. So you kind of have to just like stop periodically and really listen and hope that you catch a footstep here or there, which is not really the way. Like you want it to be fluid and you want to be able to outplay your opponents by knowing where they are. Are they pushing me from, you know, from my left and my right, above or below? And the occlusion, the audio clarity, and the consistency at which you can hear footsteps, especially when you're in an engagement, is very, very low. Um, so audio, we need big, big improvements there. Um, this one's really random, but I feel like this is more of an issue in solos. But it seems like there's rotating buy stations, meaning that like there's not a fixed set like location for buy stations. It changes from map to map or round to round, which is fine. The problem is, is you'll end up sometimes with areas where there's a third of the map that has no buy station. And so as a result, um, those like you're basically cutting off a third of the map from being played in that round because there's no there's no incentive to go there and like get your loot. You can't buy a loadout. You can't buy UAVs or anything. So why would why would you go to these POIs if you if you can't if you can't do that? So they really need to either go back to fixed buy stations or add some sort of condition to it that you know they can rotate um, within given areas but not across the whole map. Um, and so often, we'll run in, I'll run into situations where like the final three circles, there's just no buy. So if you're trying to regain, you can't buy a self-revive or your loadout guns or anything. Um, and so I would really like to see that changed. Um, the depth of the map, like going back to season one of Urgistan is really strange to me. Like no new updates, the bunkers aren't there, like you can't use the bunkers anymore. It's just back to square one. It, there's n nothing fresh. No new POIs, no new nothing. Um, I, I don't know why they did this. I know they're going to bring back for dance, so maybe they're just like, screw it. <laughs> and we'll just, they'll just play it until we get for dance. I don't know, but it's just not very exciting for you know, a new war zone. Uh, right now, there's a lot of creative class bugs. So you'll change your class. And then after the round, it'll revert back to the previous class, so you have to change it again. And it's just, or you'll make changes and back out, and they're not saved. Just that's just like a small thing, but it's just it's so annoying because you'll go if you forget, and then you go to get your class. All of a sudden, you have the wrong gun because it didn't save your changes. It's really annoying. Um, as well as just the whole UI for like saving different loadouts. Um, saving different, you know, gun variants. It's very clunky going in and out of the firing range is really clunky. The firing range is not perfect. Um, it does, it's not representative statistically of in-game because uh, snipers one shot headshot and in the, in the firing range they don't. So that leads me to believe that they are bugged. Um, just really small, annoying bugs like that. Um, do, 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 do. Weapon, weapon leveling is really slow, really grindy, um, and you know whenever you're trying to use a new gun, you're at a disadvantage already because you don't have the best attachments, and then it takes even longer to level them up. So I've been burning through double XP tokens like crazy, and I still I feel like I'm not making a ton of progress. Um, so we have the new movement system, and I do like the new movement system. It's the movement system itself is fluid. It makes sense. It's pretty easy to catch on to. Uh, my issue right now is that the guns are super clunky unless you have the proper attachment. So basically any ground loot gun that you pick up is going to perform very poorly when you're sliding and diving around the map. So it disincentivizes you to use the movement system when like your slide to fire time and your sprint to fire times are super high um, on, on the ground loot guns or guns where you don't have the right attachments. So it just feels really clunky. Same thing with the older guns like the Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3 guns. They feel really clunky as well because you don't have attachments for slide to fire or not many for sprint to fire. So you'll also run into situations like I'm so used to how fast paced the previous war zone was and so you know if i'm using ground loot and i'm pushing someone and it has two you know these are smgs with 150 or 200 milliseconds of sprint to fire time so if you're playing aggressive and sprinting at people you get caught out a lot and you just can't react in time and that's not necessarily 
a flaw with the game that could be a design decision, but coming off the previous Warzone where things were so much more fluid and fast paced, um, I feel like this is kind of a step, a step backwards. Um, last thing here is you cannot tell what you're picking up off the ground. Um, a lot of times, and I'm specifically talking about equipment a lot of the times, like stun grenades, smoke grenades, flat like flashes, concussions, all of them, they all pretty much look the same <laughs> as ground loot. Um, it's so hard to, to know what you're picking up. You just kind of have to guess and hope. Um, although I will say that I do like that there's like the smokes were nerfed a little bit as well as the um, like the thermites are gone, which were super over, overpowered. One, one hit or one down throwing knives seem to be gone. So those are all good. All right. So those are all of my negative things. A lot of those things could just be design decisions, and I just don't like them, but I perceive them as flaws. And some of them are just, I feel like, unequivocally issues with the game. The net coding, for example, the connection, the desync, and the audio, I think, are the two biggest things holding this game back. If we just had better hit detection and lack of desync and better audio, I think this game would play a lot better. All right, but let's talk about, I'll just quickly go through the list of things that I do think are really good. Right now, the gun balance, I think, is in a really good spot. You can, I think, for the most part, you can use pretty much any SMG you want. You can use pretty much any AR you want or LMG. Snipers are really strong, but they don't have a super long uh, one-shot kill range. Um, so they're not super overpowered, although they did. I don't know, again, if this is intentional or not, but there is rotational aim assist. Uh, with the snipers, so they're very easy to use if you are a novice. Um, like myself, I'm not very good, but I am sniping really well in this Call of Duty. So it's nice that they're all strong. The only thing I haven't tried is the shotguns, uh, but when I picked them up off the ground, I have not been impressed. But all in all, all of the main primary guns I think are usable and good. Um, and maybe this could just be because the connection's not sorted out yet, but it feels like skill-based matchmaking is pretty loose in this game. Um, I don't feel like every game is a super sweat fest. I'm running into lots of lots of body players and some good ones. It's it's a healthy mix. It's not like I'll go from an all bot lobby to an all sweat lobby. It seems like there is uh, a lot more balance to it, which obviously is is I think a really really good thing. Um, I just wish the connection was good to go with it. Um, but it's nice not having to go through brutal, brutal lobbies. Um, like I said, the movement system is good. It's just, unfortunately, if you don't have the right attachments, it feels very, very clunky. Um, I do like the aim assist nerf. Um, it makes up close um, gunfights a lot more. Uh, it's just, it's about like actual positioning and getting your shots on target as opposed to just trying to break someone's camera, which you certainly can do in this game with the movement system. But for the most part, um, with the aim assist nerf, you can't just fly past someone and use rotational aim assist to immediately 180 the person and lock on. It does make some up-close engagements very jarring because all of a sudden your aim goes to shit because you don't have aim assist because uh, I'm just a peasant controller player. Um, and so that... It can feel really weird at times, but as long as you just have it in the back of your mind, like, okay, in this situation, I'm not going to have super strong aim assist, then normally, like, as long as you prepare yourself, it's fine. Overall, I do like the aim assist nerf. I think they could honestly do even maybe a little bit more to nerf it. I know PC players are having a really hard time, um, but I think it's in a good place overall. Um, I like that there are now Warzone-specific camos, so it gives you something to grind along with the fact that the gun's leveling is really grindy as well. Um, you can get, uh, you know, it, it gives you incentive to keep playing. Um, there's nothing super OP right now. This kind of goes back to gun balance. There's nothing that's just like insanely overpowered that everyone is using all the time, which is good, but that also means there's nothing that's really, really exciting to use. Um, and so it's just kind of like pick your poison. 
Call of Duty is known for having really stupidly overpowered stuff. Um, and it doesn't feel like we have that right now. Uh, maybe when they introduce new guns, they'll be really strong. But right now, I feel like the balance is good. But that does lead to a little bit of like lack of excitement. And then last but not least, my favorite thing is that there is no riot shield in the game. So people cannot cower in corners and then uh, block bullets. Um, all in all, I think the game has a ton of potential when it works well, when your shots are registering, not when you're hitting your shots, but when your shots are actually registering uh, and you have good hit detection, you find good lobbies, and it's Call of Duty. It's fun. There's a lot of good things to like about this game. I like the new movement system. The gunplay feels good. But right now, just the audio and the connectivity issues are a big detractor. Um, hopefully, once I get them sorted, I will be streaming a lot more uh, Warzone. Um, but until... I can know that I can get on and safely have some good games and not rage 24-7 through, you know, I don't want to just sit and stream for three hours and complain after every gunfight because it feels awful. Um, so once, once we get to a better place and to a better state with the game, I'll stream a lot more. But, um, you know, it's still early on. I'm still, I'm forever an optimist. Um, and so I will stay optimistic and assume that Call of Duty knows these issues and that they will continue to work and improve them. Um, so there we go. That's 16 minutes. This is like an old school 2012 gameplay commentary on YouTube taking you back. But I just wanted to share my thoughts, kind of vent a little bit, try and keep it constructive. But um, I would love to get your guys' thoughts below um, and let me know what you guys are experiencing. Um, if I had to give it a score out of 10, I would say right now it's probably a 6 out of 10. Um, like a 5 or a 6 out of 10. And then, like I said, if they can just fix the connection, if they can fix the audio, um, I think you know we have an 8 out of 10, especially depending if Verdansk is good. And if it plays well, then we'll have like a new nostalgic map to play. And this could be, you know, the best Warzone yet. But we're not there yet. So anyway... Give me a number out of 10, How what you think this Call of Duty is, and uh, I'll let you guys finish up this gameplay. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Gas is inbound. Hostile UAV in the area. Gas is closing in. Relocating safe zone. This one is the top five. Tracking a high value target. Weapons hot. Gas moving in.
pushing. Just moving in. New safe zone located. <laughs> 